Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt, and today I'll be breaking down what is investing and how to invest in stocks. These fundamentals of investing are useful for everybody, but I will be targeting my advice towards millennials and Canadians in particular. I'll be covering the basics of what are stocks, dividends, and capital gains. This is the second video in my investment series, so definitely check out my last video where I broke down the four key steps to become wealthy, with investing being the last step. It's really, really important to understand steps one to three before you dive into investing. So if you haven't seen it yet, click the pop-up on the top right to check out that video first. As a quick recap, the four steps to become wealthy are paying off your credit card debts, reducing your spending, setting up an emergency fund, and finally, investing. So with that, let's jump into the world of investing. Investing is any time you set aside money today with the expectation that you'll be able to take out more money in the future. And when I say future, I don't mean next week or even next year. Investing is a long game. People who buy and sell multiple stocks over the course of a day are not investors. Those are day traders. And I do not recommend that approach for anybody. Even if you are a licensed stockbroker and you've passed your Series 7 exams, buying and selling stocks in the short term is essentially gambling. And in fact, you probably have better odds going to a casino. Instead, you need to think of investing in the long term. All of the investments in my list really show their enormous value over the course of 15, 20, or 30 years. That's a perfect timeline for millennials, especially people in their 20s. Maybe you're just out of school and you're entering the workforce for the first time. In that case, you have 30 or 40 years ahead of you before you retire. So you really need to start investing today so you can take full advantage of these decades of investment growth ahead of you. I really want to hammer home the point about investing in the long term. The general consensus is that investing in the stock market is risky and you could lose all of your money at the drop of the hat, but that is only really true if you're investing in the short term. Here I have a table showing different time frames and whether the US stock market gained or lost money between 1926 and 2015. Over the course of these 90 years, about 54% of the days the market went up and about 46% of the days the market went down. So if you're buying a stock today and you're selling it tomorrow, you basically have a 50-50 chance of losing money. But if we look at a one-year time frame, 74% of the years saw the market go up since 1926. The story gets even better if we look at a 10-year time frame. 94% of these 10-year time frames, the market made money. So if you invest in the stock market and you hold on to those stocks for 10 years, you have a 94% chance of gaining money. And looking at the 20-year periods, there has never been a single 20-year period in the history of the stock market that didn't see a positive gain. Even through the Great Depression of the 30s or the financial crash of 2008, the stock market has never lost money over the course of 20 years. So if you are a young investor and you invest in a diversified portfolio for 30 to 40 years until you retire, you are historically guaranteed to make a profit and a considerable one at that. I like to think of investing as planting a seed. After a week, if you come back and dig it up, all you'll have is just a seed. But if you give it time and you let it grow, after 10 years, that seed has become an apple tree. And now you can reap in the rewards of your investment and you can cash in all the apples that you have. Or even better, you can let that tree be. Let the apples fall and those apples will plant new seeds in the ground. Every year, your tree will plant new seeds and those new trees will plant new seeds. And now, after 30 years, your one single seed has become a whole orchard of trees. And that's the mentality I want you to have with all of your investments. Whenever you have a profit, don't just cash it out. Reinvest that profit and let your investment compound and grow faster and faster. That's how your investments can give you exponential growth. And the true power of exponential growth is letting it run for a long period of time. Here's another really important point. Do not invest with money that you'll be needing in the next year or so. If you know that you're buying a house next year or you're going to be going to university in a few months, do, do not put that money in any form of investment. Instead, put that money aside in a savings account where you can earn a modest 2% interest rate, but that money is guaranteed to grow in value. And more importantly, it's guaranteed not to lose value. You can withdraw that money from the savings account at any time at all, and it will never go down in value. The money that you put into investments should be money that you're not planning to touch until at least 10 years, ideally until you retire. So with that, let's jump into the type of investments. The building blocks of most investments are securities. And securities are either stocks 
or bonds. In today's video, I'll only be focusing on stocks. A stock represents a unit of ownership of a company. If a company like Walmart has 100 stocks available and you own 10 of these stocks, that means that you own 10% of Walmart and so you are entitled to 10% of Walmart's profits. These units of ownership are bought and sold with other investments over the stock market. These stock markets include the New York Stock Exchange for American companies and the Toronto Stock Exchange for Canadian companies. The interesting thing is that a stock, this unit of ownership, does not have any inherent value. The value of a stock is how much someone else is willing to buy it for. That's why the value of a company's stock changes every second of every day, even if nothing is changing about the company. An hour from now, if enough people are offering to pay more for the same stock, now that stock is worth more and its value increases even though nothing real has changed. So when you look at a stock's value over the course of a day, these random fluctuations are meaningless. What we actually care about is the long-term growth of a stock over the course of years. This represents real growth within a company. For example, this is the value of Apple stock over the course of a day. These fluctuations mean absolutely nothing. Some people were just willing to buy and sell for a dollar higher or lower than other investors. Nothing actually happened to Apple as a company to explain this fluctuation. But if we look at Apple stock over 15 years, we can see that after 2008, when the original iPhone was released and gaining popularity, Apple stock saw incredible and consistent growth year after year until today in 2019, when the stock of Apple is worth 10 times what it was back in 2008. This is the real kind of growth that we care about as investors. Ignore the short-term fluctuations, pay attention to the long-term growth. Another thing to note is that you'll probably hear the words shares, stocks, and equities. All of them mean the same thing. It's just a way to describe a single unit of ownership of a company. Stocks can earn you money in two ways, capital gains and dividends. Capital gains means that the stock themselves are worth more today than the price you bought them for. So if you bought 10 stocks of Facebook at $200 each, your initial investment is $2,000. Fast forward five years, and now Facebook stock is worth $300 you still own those same 10 shares of Facebook, but now each one is worth $300. So now your total investment in Facebook is worth $3,000. That's $1,000 more than you bought it for. Here is a very important point though. You have not made a $1,000 profit just yet. Your stock is worth $3,000, but you don't get any of this money until you decide to cash out and sell your stock. This concept is extremely important, but even more so when stocks drop in value. Let's say that there was another data privacy scandal and Facebook's stock value plummeted to $150. Now, your 10 shares are only worth $1,500. That's $500 less than you bought it for. You might be worried that you just lost $500 with this investment, but you really haven't yet. You haven't lost any money until you decide to sell your stocks. The moment when you sell your stocks, that's when your gains or losses become realized. Until you actually sell, that $500 loss is just a fictional number telling you what you would get if you were to sell today, but you don't have to sell. Instead, hold on to those 10 shares you have, and after about a year, Facebook stock will most likely bounce back up and you'll be at a profit again. The value of your shares is a fictional hypothetical amount. The actual true value of your investment is the number of shares that you own. So that's how capital gains works, the most basic way to make money with stocks. The second way to make money with stocks is dividends. Dividends are a percentage of the profits that a company pays out to its investors. Going back to the Walmart example, if you own 10% of Walmart stocks, you own 10% of Walmart. And so every three months or every quarter, Walmart will pay you up to 10% of its profits. And this is called a dividend. The best part is you don't have to do anything to earn this money. If you own at least one stock, the company will pay you dividends, and the more stocks you own, the more dividends you'll get. Dividends are a great way to encourage investors to invest in the long run. With capital gains, you only earn money when you sell your stocks at a profit. But with dividends, you get paid every few months, whether the stock goes up or down. So if you held on to TD stock for five years, and over those five years, the value of its stock remained flat, then when you sell it, you haven't earned any capital gains. But every three months, TD has been paying you a dividend in cash. And so over the course of these five years, you've still made a profit because of these dividends. Ideally, you want to take advantage of both dividends and capital gains. 
That means you want to invest in a company that pays you a dividend every few months and a company whose value grows year after year. Unfortunately, there aren't that many companies that do both. In fact, there are a lot of companies that don't pay a dividend at all. These are usually new companies who aren't making enough of a profit yet to justify paying out dividends. Or they could be tech companies like Apple, Facebook, or Amazon, which pay little or no dividends at all. The rationale here is that these tech companies would rather invest their profits into research so that they could develop a whole new product to release in a year or two. And this research and new product line should increase the value of the company significantly. And so the investor should be earning more money through this capital gain than they would if they had received dividends instead. Sometimes this trade-off is justified and other times it's not. But you have to be prepared for the fact that some companies just don't pay dividends and some companies can decide to stop paying dividends. Since dividends are more or less optional for a company, we can divide stocks into two main categories, growth stocks and dividend stocks. Growth stocks are companies which pay no dividend or they pay such a small dividend that it's essentially negligible. Again, these are companies which would rather invest in themselves to grow, research a new product line, or expand into a new market. When investing in these growth stocks, your only goal is capital gains. That means you want to buy these growth stocks at a low price and sell them years later at a higher price. Growth stocks include new companies which are just starting out, like Tesla and Shopify, but they also include older and larger tech companies like Apple and Microsoft. On the other hand, dividend stocks are companies which are known for paying significant dividends and for increasing their dividends over the years. These are usually well-established industry leaders that we call blue chip stocks. These companies are worth tens of billions of dollars and they've been around for decades. Because they're already so large, there isn't a whole lot of room for growth. They're still extremely profitable, but they're not going to quadruple in size the way a new company like Netflix did. Instead, these companies attract investors by consistently paying dividends every month or every quarter. Dividend stocks are generally much, much safer than growth stocks because these companies are so well established. Still, it's possible for a huge titan to fall like Blockbuster, Enron, and Nortel, but these are incredibly rare. Dividend stocks are well established companies which are staples of the industry and reliably make profits no matter what happens in the markets. These include banks like TD and BMO, energy and utility companies like Enbridge, telecommunication companies like Bell or Rogers, and consumer goods manufacturers like Coca-Cola or Procter Gamble. The strategy with dividend investing is to buy a company which has a long history of paying dividends and a long history of increasing its dividends every year. For example, the Bank of Montreal here in Canada has never missed a dividend payment in 190 years. Ever since 1829, BMO has paid out dividends to its investors every single quarter, and every year, BMO increases its dividends. I personally love dividend stocks, especially in my non-taxable accounts like my TFSA and RRSP for Canadians. And I will be making dozens of videos about how to choose a good dividend stock and which kind of account you should put these dividend stocks in. But I do want to give you guys one warning right off the bat. Do not invest in a company just because they offer a huge dividend. Most of my favorite dividend stocks pay out dividends between 4 and 6%. Anything more than a 6% dividend is a cause for concern. There are some companies out there which are in financial trouble and they are desperate for investors to help them out. And one way to attract foolish investors is to offer ridiculous dividends like 15 or 20%. Sure, this gets my attention and on paper, it looks like this company will be paying me 20% of my investment each and every year in dividends. But if you dive deep into the financials, you'll see that there's no way this company can sustain these dividends. In a lot of cases, you'll see that these companies are paying more than double their income out to dividends to attract investors. So every year, these companies are losing money and digging themselves deeper and deeper into debt until eventually, they'll have to cut their dividends or even worse, they'll have to file for bankruptcy. This topic deserves a video on its own, but I really wanted to quickly give you guys that warning before you get super excited and start chasing those ridiculously high dividends. So there you have it. There's my quick intro into the world of stock market investing. I hope I gave you a solid understanding of why it's important to invest in the long term, how to gain money through capital gains and dividends, and the difference between growth stocks and dividend stocks. 
I'll be making dozens of videos about how to choose a stock, how to read a stock market quote, how to actually buy a stock through an online broker, and how to manage your stocks to minimize taxes and fees. I'll be releasing these stock focus videos very soon, but first I want to continue with my investment series where I'll be comparing the different types of investments. I'll be talking about stocks versus bonds, mutual funds versus ETFs, and how to build a diversified portfolio. Thanks for watching guys, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. I'll be releasing a new video every Thursday. And let me know in the comments below, what are some of your favorite growth or dividend stocks? Be sure to tune into my next video, where I'll be breaking down the difference between stocks and bonds, and I'll be discussing the importance of asset allocation. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.